Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm going to be repairing this Samsung Galaxy S6. It doesn't charge and is cracked on the back, but otherwise, it's in pretty good shape. While this is an older Samsung, I think it's still worth fixing, as the screen isn't damaged. If it was, then maybe I'd have to reconsider, but older phones are a great way to further your skills because they're less valuable. Unlike the newer flagship Samsung phones, the charging port is not easy to replace. We're going to have to do some precision soldering in order to get this phone working again. Thankfully, the phone does have wireless charging, so I was able to get it to power on, but I want to get this phone fully working. As you can see, the micro USB port is destroyed. No wonder it won't charge. I purchased a pack of 10 new micro USB ports for only $6. So this will be a relatively cheap repair given I already have most of the recommended tools to do the job. Taking one of the connectors out, you can see just how small the pins I need to solder to are. This is definitely not a repair I'd recommend to everyone, but it'll still be interesting to see just how I managed to get it on, and hopefully we end up with a working phone. This was the first Samsung to be glued shut with its battery inside. It's amazing how companies adopted this ridiculous practice. Nevertheless, it will open in the same way to most modern Android phones, with heat and prying. I had some difficulty with the glue, as the heat didn't seem to affect it all that much, but once my pick was in, I could use it to pry the back free. Inspecting the back, it looks like it was attached using superglue. This glue sets rock hard and would explain the chips to the gold paint. With normal vibrations and flexing, the glue breaks the paint loose from the glass. Inside the phone, the battery appears to be failing, as it's become slightly bloated. Before disassembling the phone any further, I'll remove the remaining glass and adhesive. The original adhesive is still present and wasn't removed when the back was changed. I see this all the time. It's amazing just how lazy some technicians are. After removing the SIM tray, I can now unfasten the mid-frame of the phone. There are two types of screws used, a flat and rounded top screw. To no surprise, the last repairer screwed this up and put a screw in the wrong place. Now we can carefully detach the mid-frame and reveal the internals of the phone. I'm going to remove the battery first before doing anything. We definitely don't want to damage it when soldering as we could send the battery into thermal runaway. Using some prying tools, I can free it from the frame of the phone. Now having removed it, something tells me someone already knew this battery was bad but installed it anyway, as evidenced by the red X on the back. As for the rest of the phone, it's not looking too original. Everywhere I look, I see Chinese stickers on the motherboard, front camera, battery, housing, and speaker. It looks as though this phone has been so-called refurbished in China at some point in its life. With the mid frame removed, we can get a really good look at the damage to the charge port. While it's on its own flex cable that can be replaced, there are two cables coming off the charge port that run under the display. These cables are for the navigation buttons. So in order to replace the cable, you would have to remove the screen, likely destroying it in the process. This is a horrible design choice by Samsung that thankfully they no longer do starting with the Galaxy S8. Only if they had have installed a ZIF connector that would have allowed those navigation buttons to be unplugged, this would be an easy repair. Instead, I'll have to attempt to replace the connector using hot air and a soldering iron while it's still attached to the phone. Unplugging the charge port will allow me to rotate it up just enough to apply some Teflon tape. This heat resistant tape will hopefully protect the screen and surrounding components. I'll also place a coin below the port to act as a heatsink. The first stage to remove the port is to apply a low heat and scrape away the glue that is behind the micro USB jack. I used around 150 degrees which worked for me, but keep in mind I'm new to micro soldering, hence why I'm using this older phone to further my skills. I also don't have a microscope, so I'll be doing all of this with my eyes. After the glue is removed, I'll apply some low melt solder. This will mix with what's already in place and help bring down the temperature required to desolder the port. 
After doing so, I can now use a hot air station, which I had set at 250 degrees, to heat up the port and solder joints. Once the solder is melted, the port can be removed. With the easy part done, we now have to install the new one. What's left on the solder pads is a mixture of mine and Samsung solder. To ensure a good connection, we'll remove the old solder using flux and a desoldering wick. After we clean it up with some alcohol, I'll be able to apply some fresh, low melt solder to the pads. While the pads are tiny, there is solder mask surrounding them, so they won't bridge together unless you've applied too much solder. After everything is cleaned off, it's time for the new connector to be installed. This is the hardest part, as I'm doing all this without a microscope. I promise the next micro soldering repair I will do, I'll have an actual microscope, so both you and I can see what I'm actually doing. After briefly heating the port and solder joints, I can put the two together. This stage took a few attempts, as it was difficult to line up the pins of the port to the pads on the board. After I was done, I let everything cool down before removing the Teflon tape. Now will come the moment of truth. I'll need to reconnect the flex cable to the motherboard so we can test out whether or not my soldering job actually works and this phone can now charge through its micro USB connector. Here is what the end result looks like. Ignore the goop behind those pins, that's just what's left of the glue that was holding the original connector in. I know it's not perfect, but factoring in I did this with my eyes, I'm happy if it works. It's time to test. I'll reinstall the old battery before connecting a micro USB connector. After a short time, the phone lit up with the charging symbol. I can't believe it actually works. So it's time to finish the phone off, and for that we're going to need a new battery. This one claims to be an original battery, so let's inspect it. Firstly, it's got all of the text it should. That includes the text on the back, which the fakes always miss. If we compare it to the battery we removed earlier, you can see the old one was definitely a fake, as it's missing the text from the back of the battery. So I can't confirm for sure if the new battery is original, but to me, it looks like it is. So I can plug it into the phone and seat it down into position. You'll notice that I didn't replace the adhesive, and that's because the old stuff was plenty strong enough, as you can see here. As for our S6, it's looking as good as it's going to get on the inside. So it's time to reattach the midframe and its several Phillips head screws. Remember earlier how I said there was a domed head and a flat head screw? Well, the domed head screws go next to the charging port, and the remaining flat top screws cover the rest of the midframe. Once those are installed, I'm going to try and remove as much of the super glue mess that's left behind. Once that's done, it's time to apply the new back panel. After removing the plastic protective film, it can be positioned into place and firmly pressed down. With that, we can now install a tempered glass screen protector onto the front display. And lastly, remove the plastic film from our new back panel. And we're done. So this is it, a repaired Galaxy S6. Definitely repair not for the faint-hearted, but having managed to replace the port without damaging the display or anything else means this phone can live on. I'm not sure what I'll be doing with the device, but it won't be sold as refurbished, as I'm not yet confident with my micro-soldering skills. If I was to sell it, it'd be listed as is with a mention to my DIY soldering repair. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the phone repair playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.